Blake Masters scored the worst focus group results of any candidate he had ever seen. That's what Stephen Law, head of a Mitch McConnell-aligned super PAC, said about the newest candidate in the Arizona Senate race. Blake Masters is a venture capitalist who lost a not particularly competitive Senate race to incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly in 2022. His frequent gaffes on the campaign trail, which included things like praising the Unabomber, led to a five-point defeat. Masters underperformed his polling average by nearly four points. Will things be different for Blake Masters in 2024? Let's discuss. Masters joins what is becoming a crowded race on the GOP side. Pinal County Sheriff Mark Lamb was the first serious candidate to enter the race. Lamb is running on a far-right, tough-on-crime platform, which I thought would make him a strong contender in the GOP primary. Unfortunately for Mark Lamb, it appears that Carrie Lake will also be running. Lake won the GOP gubernatorial nomination in 2022, ultimately losing to Democrat Katie Hobbs by 0.6% in an election that Lake still hasn't conceded. Lake filed a lawsuit to overturn the results of that election, but it ultimately failed. Assuming Masters and Lake both enter the race by the end of the year, I have a very hard time believing Mark Lamb will emerge as the GOP nominee. Masters and Lake are known commodities who have successfully won a primary for statewide office. However, a recent poll suggests Blake Masters won't be much of a factor either. A poll conducted by Emerson in August found that 42% of Arizona's GOP primary voters would back Kerry Lake with just 11% for Mark Lamb and 7% for Blake Masters. Arizona Republican strategist Barrett Marson has even said, Lake and Blake were a team last year, but in their events, Kerry Lake was clearly the draw. I'm just not sure how Blake differentiates himself from Kerry Lake in a meaningful way. However, Carrie Lake hasn't formally announced her bid, and in a head-to-head -head matchup between Masters and Lamb, I could see Masters winning due to name recognition and what would likely be a significant fundraising advantage. On the Democratic side, there are two declared candidates and one very obvious frontrunner. House Rep. Ruben Gallego and engineer Andrew Becerra are running, and there aren't any rumblings about any other candidates. Gallego is far and away the frontrunner. He has been fundraising very well and earned 48% of the vote in Emerson's poll, with just 40% undecided. Barring a major scandal, he will be the Democratic nominee. And of course, there is the state's current senator, Kirsten Sinema. She left the Democratic Party at the end of 2022, becoming an independent. Initially, her approval surged among independents and Republicans while cratering among Democrats. However, those numbers have mostly stabilized. I think that's because people quickly realized her party affiliation wouldn't change how she served as a senator. Overall, Kirsten Sinema remains the sixth least popular senator in the country. Before we take a look at current general election polling, I want to talk about Arizona's demographics. The state has become much more favorable for the Democrats in recent years. The Latino population, which votes heavily Democratic, is growing. Democrats have gained considerable ground in Maricopa County, with Joe Biden finally flipping it in 2020. Arizona is highly urbanized, which benefits the Democratic Party, and in a battleground state, every vote really matters, which is why the Democrats performing well among Arizona's Native American population is crucial. For the GOP to win this race in 2024, they'll probably need to retake Maricopa County, and that means winning back the suburbs. Can they do it? Well, polling suggests Ruben Gallego is the favorite in a three-way race. Emerson's recent poll didn't survey a three-way race between Gallego, Cinema, and either Blake Masters or Kerry Lake. However, Gallego held an 11-point lead in a race versus Cinema and Brian Wright, as well as a 7% lead in a three-way race between Cinema and Mark Lamb. In a general election, since their policies are pretty similar, I'd expect Masters and Lake to do pretty similarly to Mark Lamb, if not slightly better due to their name recognition. And a Noble Predictive Insights poll from July did survey these three-way races. Gallego led in a three-way race versus Cinema and Masters by 4%. Gallego led in a three-way race for Cinema and Lake by 8%. Regardless of the GOP's eventual candidate, I think Gallego is the slight favorite to win in a three-way race. And that's primarily because polling shows us that Kirsten Sinema's presence in the race actually hurts the Republican candidate. The same Emerson poll found Gallego leading right by 3% in a head-to-head -head matchup. Gallego was tied with Mark Lamb head-to-head. -head. When I first looked at this race, I had it lean GOP, and it is the rating I've received the most comments about. In fact, I'm still receiving comments about it. And listen, I was wrong. I think Gallego is really the slight favorite right now. He's raising more money than Kirsten Cinema and the declared GOP candidates, and the demographics of Arizona favor him. And I don't think the far-right views of Lamb, Masters, and Lake, which include the belief that recent elections have been stolen, will play well in the Maricopa suburbs the GOP desperately needs to win back. 
And there's still another thing that may work against the GOP in 2024. Before I tell you what it is, if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button. Kirsten Cinema only has 1,800 YouTube subscribers. Let's see if we can pass her before she decides whether or not she's running in this race. Now, here's the thing that could really put Democrats over the top in 2024. Arizona abortion rights advocates are looking to add a measure to the ballot in 2024 that would overturn the state's existing 15-week ban on abortion. We've seen liberal voters be very energized by these types of ballot initiatives. Just last month, issue one was thoroughly rejected by Ohio voters. If this measure gets added to the ballot, I'd expect it to succeed, and I'd expect those voters to back Gallego as well. I'm sure he'll make abortion rights an even bigger campaign issue if this ballot measure gets added. Leave a comment below to let me know who you think will win the Arizona Senate race, then check out my next video to see my full Senate prediction. Just don't leave any comments on that video telling me why I'm wrong about Arizona.